Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front end development. In today's video, you will learn how to use props and how to pass them between components and how to use the React prop types to validate the data flowing through your app. But before we do that, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Let's firstly break down the app inside app.js into multiple components. We'll simply create a headline arrow function that will return our h1. We can copy and paste it from the app itself and then reuse the headline component inside of the app like this. Remember it's self-closing and then we can create another one. This one will be called greetings or greeting and it will return a simple paragraph. Again, I could copy and paste it from here, but I want to type in something else. So I'll just type in paragraph and inside of it some text. And now we can reuse it. I can duplicate the headline by holding Alt and Shift and arrow down. It will duplicate the line of code for me inside of VS Code and I'll rename the component to greeting. Okay, so Alt, drag down will move the whole line and Alt Shift duplicates it. If you are on VS Code, a very useful keyboard shortcut. And the last thing we'll do, we'll change the text to welcome to the React world. And that will be it, okay? So now if we save it and refresh the page or open the browser, we should see welcome to the React world. You will love it. Now let's talk about props and how to pass props into components and reuse it inside of the components. Okay, so you can think about props as HTML attributes on your elements or on your React components. Okay, so imagine if this greeting have some prop called name and I would call it my name. You can call it your own name if you're following me step by step. And then we would want to reuse this inside of the greeting component. We would need to pass it the props like this. And then we can change the better inside of here. And inside of the curly brackets, we'll just type in props dot name. And we should be able to get the name from the greetings component and render it on the page. Okay, so let's see if that works. I go back to the page and this is rendering correctly. If we change the name to John, we should see it refreshes to John. Okay, if I go back to the React developer tools and inspect the greetings, greeting component, you'll see that it has the props name John. And as you can see, the props are read only. So you can't change the props of the component in any way. You can just reuse it and use it inside of the render method. So this is how you're passing props from one component to the other. And as I said, think about it as HTML attributes on your React components. You can call them whatever you like. So let's create another one called H. And this one will be a number. So let's say 25. And again, we try to reuse it inside of the greeting. Inside of the parentheses, we want to include the H. Okay, so props.h should render the age of the person on the page. And yes, we've got it here. Okay, so this is how you can pass multiple props into a component. But one thing I wanted to show you, instead of writing props name, props age, we can use destructuring. Okay, so we can create new constant and inside of the curly braces, we'll include name and age. And we want to get that from the props. Okay, so we're destructuring the props and only taking the age and name and then inside of these curly braces, we can get rid of the props, okay? So this makes your return statement much more compact. We don't have to reuse the props.name or age. 
and later on when we start working with classes that would be this dot props dot name yeah, it becomes too long so get familiar with the concept of destructuring and if I save it we should not see any difference it is exactly the same as before another very important concept when it comes to props is prop types checking making sure that we are passing the right right type of data into our props and for that we can use the built-in react prop types we'll define greeting prop types object like this and inside of it we'll validate the name and we want to make sure that this is a string so react prop types dot string comma after that and the h will be the same react prop types but this time we'll change it to number okay so these two will validate the data for our two attributes or props name and age and if we change the age now to string 25 we'll see an error inside of the browser invalid prop age of type string supplied to greetings expected number okay so if you come across error message like this you not passing the right format of data so let's go back to 25 the other thing which you can validate is is required okay so we can make sure that the age is required so if we delete it and inside of the prop types we'll add on is required and save the file we should see an error complaining about that prop age is missing okay so this is how you can define and make sure that some of the props are required and if we put it back on you'll see that the error is gone you can refer to all of the other prop types inside of react by going to the type checking with prop types article and here is many more examples how you can check your data array boolean function number go and check that article out for more details and also another tool handy for prop types checking and data flow is typescript but i'll have more advanced tutorials on that a little bit later for now just remember that typescript is very handy for large-scale applications And that's it all for today. Now you know how to use the props and validate the data using prop types. And in the next video, you will learn how to create classes. Classes are very important for large scale application. And if you want to use some of the React life cycles. So in the next video, we'll cover how to create React classes. If you enjoying this series, let me know in the comments, what would you want to learn next? And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Also, don't forget to watch other VS Code and Webpack 2 tutorials if you want to learn more about the modern front-end development workflow. Until next time, happy coding! Bye!